The Bluegrass Music Hall of Fame Museum, certainly the thing that energizes everything we do is the music. It's about the music. But I like to refer to it as music with a mission. Music with a mission in the sense that it's not just about entertainment, certainly there's plenty of that, whether it's at Romp or here at our, uh, in our Woodward Theater or on our outdoor stage. But really what we're trying to encourage is engagement around the music, engagement around the, the cultural heritage of bluegrass music, because it's uniquely Kentucky. Really our goal is just to educate people around this area about bluegrass music. You know, Bill Monroe, born and raised right down the road in Rosie, Kentucky. Bluegrass music that is popular literally all over the entire world comes from this area. We feel like it's very important that people not only be introduced to it, but, but learn about it. It's more than just music, it's that, but it's also about the music, about gathering, preserving, exhibiting the history of bluegrass music, but then helping current and future generations understand why it's relevant, how they can engage. Well, Romp is our really our biggest fundraiser, and, and it, it's even though it's the, the huge festival and it's really what the community sees, but the whole purpose of that is so that we can have funding to um, for our educational programming, which is about the preservation of the bluegrass music genre. I get the great pleasure of doing the bluegrass in the schools. So what that entails of is me going into the classrooms. Uh, taking either fiddle, mandolin, guitar, or banjo, work directly with the music teacher and get to go into the classrooms, put the instruments in the kids' hands and get to spend about a week or so uh, giving them an introduction of that instrument. It's a gateway to getting students to know about that connection to Western Kentucky and the, the history and the, uh, the culture and the tradition of the music. And that really, it develops an interest with the students and many times they'll go home tell their parents about what's going on. They may, may end up coming to actually visit the museum just because somebody went in and told them about what's going on. They may end up here as part of a tour group, or they may decide that they just loved it so much they want to take a lesson on the Saturday morning lessons. When they experience playing an instrument in the schools, some kids really, uh, they're curious to want to know more. They want to hear more about it. They want to potentially even learn to play an instrument. These programs are all connected and uh, and all support each other and dovetail really well. Whether it is our Bluegrass in the Schools program or Saturday Lessons or Open Jam, one of those programs is called the Bluegrass Band Project, where we bring musicians together in a group, we all learn a common repertoire, and then we break into smaller manageable groups and we coach these individuals in terms of not just the arrangement, but how you interact. As, as a band and it's great because it's just another outlet for these musicians who want to learn, who want to develop, to plug in. Hello, my name is Mackenzie Bell and I play the fiddle. I play in the band Never City Strings that was created by the Bluegrass Band Project here at the museum. Playing with a band and the making the life of playing by myself and of playing with a whole band, it was, took a little time because I, I had to learn that I wasn't just the one playing. I, other people were playing, I had to let other people play too. And it, it was changing, but um, I got used to it. And now it's just the funnest time that I, that I have ever had. Chris Joslin and uh, Randy Lanham had a vision for spreading the joy of bluegrass music throughout the community in Western Kentucky, Owensboro, and uh, surrounding areas. So our River City Strings Band is one of the bands that has persevered over the last two years. And we've grown together musically and uh, we have enjoyed spreading the joy and serving the community in this fashion. We've partnered with another lo local nonprofit called Volunteer Owensboro. They exist to help people who want to volunteer for a nonprofit to connect with the right nonprofit. So once we coach and nurture these folks in a band context, then we create opportunities, identify opportunities, and help them find a place to serve. I think music stirs something in people that's really unique and it's sometimes hard to explain. So you think about folks who are in an assisted living situation or in a nursing home or hospice 
or in other areas that they can't get to the music, but you bring it to them, you can play songs that really stir things in them, stir emotions, and help them engage cognitively in a way that maybe they don't have other opportunities like that. So I love the fact that the Bluegrass Band Project has a dual purpose and is far reaching in terms of the people who participate and the community it serves. For those who are considering getting involved, you know, perhaps as a member or if it's a donor who has a real heart for a specific program like Bluegrass in the Schools or our free instrument loan program, I think there are plenty of opportunities and avenues for those folks to kind of come alongside our mission and to partner with us. And really what that does is it, it helps us have an impact and I think at the end of the day that's what it's all about is to have an impact on individuals and have an impact on communities and so we couldn't accomplish what we do and make it accessible to people without a lot of partners who come alongside us so that's uh, that's definitely key and we're so fortunate that we have a lot of people that uh, that have a natural interest in what we're doing and see the value in that and want to be a part of it. <laughs>